G'day everyone, and welcome to Lubrication Explained. Today, I'm going to be talking about zinc additives in engine oils. So if we were to look at any internal combustion engine, there are literally thousands of moving parts. Most of them, we are relying on the engine oil to protect. Now, if we were to look at the cams specifically, what we'd find is that they are generally the most heavily loaded engine component. As a result, they can be a significant pain point, particularly in older engines. Now, there are a wide variety of cam designs, cam and follower designs. Um, one of the overarching themes is that there's been a move from flat tappet to roller tappet, for example. But fundamentally, they all operate in roughly the same way. So let's take a look at the cam in detail. At the surface, what we really want, as with most other components, is for the lubricant to be able to carry the load between them and sufficiently separate the two metal surfaces so that they don't come into contact with each other. The challenge that we have with cams is that the loads can be so high that a lubricant would have to have a really, really high viscosity to be able to separate the two out. If we were to have an oil with sufficient viscosity that it could separate the cams from the tappets, what we would actually find is that we would end up with an engine oil that is way too thick for the rest of the engine. We would run into all kinds of problems when it came to cold temperature start, for example, or getting sufficient lubricant um, around the engine um, on a start. So instead what we want is another solution. We want some kind of sacrificial um, surface protector. And what we ideally need is for it to bond with the metal surfaces in the engine. It needs to form a hard sacrificial barrier. And it has to have no or positive impact on oil oxidation. Enter. Zinc dia zinc dialkyl da di yeah stuff this. Let's just call it as it's top topically known ZDDP. This is roughly what the molecule looks like. Now, in actual fact, if you looked at it in three dimensions, the the first two sulfurs from the left, um, as well as the alkyl groups, are kind of in a different plane. So I'll try and represent that here. This molecule, as you'll notice, has a few things. It's got sulfur in it, phosphorus, zinc, and oxygen. So to just call it zinc, as it's commonly known, is a bit of a misnomer. The R, so there's four of those and you can see them attached to the ends, that's called an alkyl group. So that's a polymer chain of lots of carbon and hydrogens. And the thing is, R can take an infinite array of forms so in actual fact, ZDDPs are a family of different zinc-containing additives. Not all zincs are the same. Now, one thing that we know is that sulfur, and to a lesser degree, phosphorus, are known catalyst poisoners. So over the last 20 years, a lot of the regulation has been focused on reducing ZDDP content in engine oils. And that's predominantly for emissions purposes. This is why we can sometimes run into problems with older engines using newer style lubricants because a lot of these older engines were designed at a time where there was less emissions regulations and the zinc content of engine oils tended to be a fair bit higher. Okay, so we've got this uh, ZDDP molecule. So what's the active ingredient in it? Well, in actual fact, from an anti-wear perspective, it's the last bit of that molecule, the thiophosphate. Thiophosphoric acid is actually a very potent anti-wear additive. Now, unfortunately, because it's an additive, if you were to pour it into an engine oil, it would damage all the seals in your engines. And so that's why we don't use it. During the manufacturing process, what we actually do is we take thiophosphoric acid and we have to neutralize it with a base. So some kind of uh, metal oxide. 
Zinc oxide is the most common one, and that's how we end up with this zinc thiophosphate. So it's actually the phosphorus which is performing the anti-wear function. There are a lot of engine oils out there that are advertised on their zinc content. 1,000 parts per million zinc, 1,300 parts per million zinc. In actual fact, the zinc is inert. It's the phosphorus that is doing all the hard work. So in actual fact, we should be, rather than pronouncing this as zinc, dioxyl dithiophosphate, we should be saying zinc dioxyl dithiophosphate. The P is the important thing. Alright, so let's go back to the surface of our uh, cam tappet in this case. What does that sacrificial layer look like? Well, it actually is a layer that's really thin. So somewhere between the order of 50 and 150 nanometers. So that's all that's protecting the cam surfaces. Now, what does that layer look like? We don't actually really know. Our analytical techniques that we have in the lab are not sophisticated enough to really understand the complex structure of this zinc layer. So this is our kind of best guess at what we think it looks like. There's some kind of iron or zinc sulfide. Above that is a sort of a glass structure. And when I say glass, I mean in the scientific term, which is a, a solid that is kind of amorphous, not, not crystalline. And up the top, we have a zinc polyphosphate. So that's zinc as an anti-wear, but the good thing about ZDDP is it actually has, it's a multifunctional additive. It does a few things in your engine. The second of which is it acts as sulfated ash. So what is sulfated ash and why is it needed? Well, one thing is that in any engine, the intake and the exhaust valves are constantly slamming into the valve seat. If we were to do this without any kind of lubrication, what you would eventually get is valve recession. And that can be a really big problem in some engines. Now, sulfated ash is actually the residue that's left over when a lubricant is burnt. And ZDDP is one of the major contributors to the ash level of an engine oil. That ash will then sit just above uh, the valves and it will help cushion the impact with the valve seat. The last function that zinc performs is as an antioxidant. So it helps prevent oxidation, which is effectively the aging of the oil or the cooking of the oil in use. Now, the most common antioxidants are probably the aminic and the phenolic antioxidants. And what they do is they neutralize free radicals in the oil. ZDDP doesn't really work like that. It's actually a hyperperoxide uh, inhibitor. So what does that mean? Well, uh, for anyone who is interested in the chemistry, which you don't really need to know this, effectively what happens is that you have radicals that are created in the oil. That radical then bonds with more oxygen and creates a hydroperoxide. And that zinc then helps inhibit the chain reaction by neutralizing that hydroperoxide. And so that's how zinc can help slow down the aging process in an engine oil. All right, so zinc, what does it do? Remember, it's a family of anti-wear additives. Not all zincs are the same. And it performs three main functions. The first is anti-wear, that's the main one. The second is it provides sulfated ash to help cushion the valve seats. And the third is it acts as an antioxidant by neutraling, neutralizing hyperoxides. Thanks for listening. This has been Lubrication Explained.